Have you ever seen an abandoned train before? What happens to trains after they retire anyways? Traveling millions of miles and hauling heavy loads puts a strain on trains. Like all machines, they don't last forever. Though you can refurbish them and keep replacing parts, there comes a point in time where it's no longer in a railroad's best interest to keep an old train running. So then what do you do? A few lucky trains will get sold or donated to other railroads or perhaps a museum. Other times, they'll be used for spare parts. But more often than not, old trains are sent to the scrapyard. Except there are a few cases where the rail vehicles will just be dumped outside somewhere, abandoned and left to the elements. Last year, I showed you some old O'Hare Airport people mover cars that were standing outside the airport in Chicago. Now, what if I told you that just a few miles away, you can find another, much larger abandoned train? Let's head to Bensonville, Illinois and find them. Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new Trains Are Awesome video. I am Tom. We are driving through the village of Bensonville, which is like immediately west of O'Hare International Airport. Uh, Bensonville, as well as the neighboring villages of Elk Grove, Wooddale, just form this massive industrial zone. And after doing a little bit of research online, I discovered that in the middle of this industrial area in Bensonville, we might come across some abandoned commuter rail trains. So we're gonna see if they're still there and how close we can get. So we're here and like right behind me is this abandoned locomotive. This whole area is super industrial and serving all the businesses is a network of freight spurs. North of here, there's the Chicago Junction Railway in Elk Grove Village. We briefly mentioned them in our previous video. Down here in Bensonville, the tracks are owned by the Chicago, St. Paul, and Pacific Railroad. Both companies are owned by Progressive Rail, and they get goods from the big Class 1 freight companies to the different businesses around Bensonville and Elk Grove. Except on this one track that we're at now, I don't expect any freight trains to stop by anytime soon. It looks like we have a squatter, and he's in pretty bad shape. I think it's important to mention that we looked for no trespassing signs and we did not see any. It was certainly not our intention to break any laws, and of course, we left everything exactly the way we found it. If you want to explore these trains yourself, that does not take away your personal responsibility to look for signs and obey them if you see them. Also, these trains may be abandoned, they are still not yours to damage or vandalize. So what is this train? Let's look at the locomotive first. The bright green color suggests a history with the Burlington Northern. Through the years, this local has run under many different flags and has had several different numbers as well. It entered service in 1955 as an E8A locomotive built by EMD. Given the number 9973, it was in service with the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad and was later converted to an E9A locomotive. Both the E8s and the E9s were super popular across the United States, and they were a big factor in diesel locomotives replacing steam trains for long-distance passenger services. Sure enough, this locomotive ran on the CBNQ's prestigious Zephyr trains. In 1970, the CBNQ merged into the new Burlington Northern Railroad. Eight years later, number 9973 received a new green Burlington Northern paint scheme and a new number. 9907. Since Amtrak had taken over long distance passenger services by then, this locomotive was repurposed for commuter services. It hauled commuter trains between Chicago and Aurora on what today is called the Metro BNSF line. But Metro wasn't a thing yet back then. Many people mistakenly believe that this is the locomotive that was involved in that very tragic accident in Downers Grove in 1991. That was a similar locomotive, but it was number 9912 and that locomotive is currently stored somewhere by the Nashville and Eastern Railroad in Tennessee. The 9907, on the other hand, was eventually sent over to Maryland in 1992, where it ran on Mark commuter services, still wearing that green paint scheme. At first, Mark gave it the number 67, and it was later renumbered to 91. 
Sometime in the 2000s, Mark sold them to Iowa Pacific Holdings, a company that owned a variety of rolling stock and even operated a few of their own trains. From what I can tell, the prime mover was removed from the 91 and it was used to restore a train on the Wisconsin and Southern Railroad. By 2019, Iowa Pacific wanted to get rid of this shell of a locomotive. They placed ads, but clearly nobody ever took them up on it because they're still here and Iowa Pacific went bankrupt in 2021. Clearly, Progressive Rail has made no effort to get these trains off their tracks. Now let's take a look at the passenger cars. There's one bi-level gallery car right behind the locomotive and a whole rake of them on the next track. These were in service with the Chicago and Northwestern. I've made many a video about gallery cars in the past, so be sure to check those out. But it is pretty sad to see the state that they're in today. Like the locomotive, they're heavily vandalized. And these cars over here have clearly been the victim of arson. All the trains that are collecting rust here are legends of American Railroad history, and they're important specifically to the Chicagoland area. I truly wish that there was a way to save them. So yeah, that's what happens when you leave a train standing for at least 30 years. Now, these trains are not going anywhere. If you want to come see them, they are relics of the past, so please give them the respect that they deserve. Now, thank you so much for watching today. This was a really fun adventure, kind of something that I haven't done that much of in the past. But whatever my next train or public transportation themed adventure is, come along, subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon, and we'll see you next time.